Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes, celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Oh, here we are, six years and 182 Irish Family History podcasts later. Boy, and we've all, we've done, I wonder if we've hit 300 yet for all of our six different series, but we'll talk about that another time. Let's listen to today's topics at the Irish Roots Cafe. The family name of the day is Barry of Cork. The county of the month is County Cork. Uh, we're going to search for uh, Rot- Rockford or Roachford, Connery, Duke, Caffrey, McCaffrey, and Houston on our search list. Uh, curious news, worn Ogham or Ogham stones in Ireland today. Uh, number five, a bald-headed record has been set. Number six, curious notes, Tipperary, Cavan, and Leitrim color maps. And number seven, Uh, The One Minute Podcast is an excerpt from one that's coming up today on our uh, uh, Irish language podcast, Oum, the First Irish Alphabet. Oh, it's a good one, folks. Hey, and remember, we've got uh, got three kinds of podcasts, one, one, and most of them are free for everybody. Number two, we have some archive uh, podcasts that have a fee on them. I think they're 99 cents or so. And then there's a member-only podcast, and we've got, well, at least 100 of those, and those are going to increase here pretty soon. I've got a whole new scheme worked out. Uh, And let's say, uh, hey, what's it's time for, uh, is that the notes for the week? Now we got to see what's happening. Ooh, I'm getting ready to reprint several county books. And that includes uh, adding color covers of maps of the county for counties Cavan and Leitrim and the uh, county Tipperary Ireland genealogy and family history notes. So those should be ready soon. And number two, we've been named to the top 30 Celtic culture blogs on Tim Dalton's site. That's always good to hear. Uh, Number three, yes, we're on Facebook and on Twitter. Just look for the Irish Roots Cafe. And number four, Borders Goes Broke, uh, that's one at less outlet, and one, and distributors are hurt too. I had some pe- folks handling our books saying, well, we're going out, we, we can't do it anymore, and uh, that's too bad. You could see it coming though, when, when the bills stop getting paid and uh, uh, the big distributors start turning you down, that's a warning sign. So, boy, things sure have changed. Borders used to be one of the biggest things around here when it first came out, but that's the story of life. Hey, we're getting ready for the next thing is the uh, is that one minute podcast, and that's from the uh, uh, Hello Fada podcast. And we broke with tradition, and it's a, a long one this time, and it's about Oum, the first Irish alphabet ever. And uh, uh, we're going to take a listen to it now. Listen to Chris and I have a little conversation. Well, here we are at the Irish Roots Cafe today, and we have a very special guest, as always. We've, you know, we've dug a little bit into uh, um, the Irish language, and Renata has helped us with that. And I'm taking some uh, some courses to sort of figure that out. And I've also looked at the alphabet way back, the very first alphabet about... Uh, uh, well, that's about 3,000 years ago, I think. They said it was in some th- something like the El Wadi watering hole or, or something along those lines. Uh, but now we're going to talk about maybe the first alphabet to appear in Ireland and learn a little bit about what they call Oum or o- Ogham or Ogham. Uh, I'm seeing, sure if you've seen it written, you understand that's O-G-H. Uh, is that A-M or O-M, Chris? A-M. That's A.M. Well, Chris, tell us a little bit about how you came into your interest with uh, this form of the early language and uh, what you're doing with us now. Okay. Um, back in 1993, 
uh, I had an opportunity to study at Trinity College Dublin uh, for a course in pre-Christian Celtic traditions. And uh, one of the benefits of the course was actually uh, lots of time for independent study. Um, I used my time to travel throughout the country and explore uh, Ireland as best I could. And as I was doing that, um, I came across poem stones, uh, particularly in the southwest of the country. And they were certainly interest, interesting and they caught my attention, but they were not necessarily part of the coursework because we were doing pre-Christian. And that's you know something important about Oum. Oum is more than likely a, a Christian era um, writing system. Now, now, for those of us that, that aren't really have just maybe seen the word and they've seen some scratches on maybe a plaque, what what is it? How do you know you've run into it? Say you're in Ireland, you're drive, driving over there in Kerry, and you see a big old stone sticking up, uh, and it's got some etchings on it. How do you know it's Oum? Um Well, it would be a series of lines, and in some cases there would be a vertical line running from the bottom to the top. That's it. You're going to have to listen to the Hello Font fada podcast either on our webpage or on itunes to hear the rest of it but it's worth your time it's really an interesting subject that a lot of people don't know about now it's time for our next subject well it's the book of the day what have we got today or you could call it the book of the month depends on how much you like it we've actually got several of them uh number one's the families of county cork ireland and that's, uh, we've got an extra, I try to do a different extract each time we pick a book, and we've got a, a different extract on that book this time. And we've got a list of uh, a description of County Cork in 1741, and the sh- sh- chief seats of the families in that area, uh, people like the Earl of Barrymore at Castle Lyons, and uh, Lord Kingston at Mitcheltown, and Sir Richard Mead at Ballantubber, and Sir Richard Cox at Dunmanway, and Sir John Frake at uh, Rathbury, and Brian Wade at Feel, and John Beecher at Affadown, and Samuel Gervais in The Leap, and uh, uh, John Rogers in Ashgrove, and John Harper at Kilvocori, uh, a merchant, it says, and uh, uh, John Coglin of Rossmore, and Matthew O'Hay of Kilcarran, and uh, George Rye of Castle Moor. So, you know, there's one more way you might be able to get a tie to your family or at least the wealthier portions of your family. They're probably the ones that had your ancestors shipped over and out so there'd be no one to contest the will, don't you think? Well, I don't know about that, but that's something to think about on uh, uh, what kind of sources you can find in books. And number two, the Genealogy and Family History Notes of County Cork, Ireland. Uh, we've got a link to that one and the other, all these that I list here on the blog. Um, those first two are the ones I've written and uh, uh, part of the Irish Families Project. Number three, uh, Cricad on Coley. Ooh, I don't know how to really just pronounce that. Uh, C-R-I-C-H-A-D space A-N space C-H-A-O-I-L-L-I. That's the top topography of Fermoy by power, and Fermoy is in... Uh, County Cork, but a lot of ancient family locations given there. That's really an interesting work done, uh, what, about 80 years ago? It was written on the old, old times. Number four, the Journal of the Cork Archaeology, uh, Archaeological Society, and they've got many sources and a lot of history within Cork, not only actual stories that might have your family in them, but a lot of things at the end of these articles, they'll tell you that uh, uh, one of the sources was a story about the uh, berries of County Cork or the berries of Fermoy. So remember that. And last but not least, the family names of County Cork by Omer Hada or O. Murphy in modern terms. And that's from my library, too. And that's a good one, too. And I had to share it with you if you're looking for things in County Cork. And now it's time we move on to, uh, I think that's the uh, Magnificent Seven. <laughs> Hey, coming up, we're going to hear about a bald-headed record that was set and also about 1,000 dolphin fins found somewhere in Ireland. And hey, it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. John Murphy of Sunnyside, New York, 
Come on down. It's your county. Uh, our Ma genealogy and family history knows has shipped to Karen Roachford or Karen Rockford of Gahana, Ohio. Welcome as a new member. Uh, looking for Richard Roachford or Rockford of County Clare, married to Honor Murphy. Sometimes that's Honora. And oldest son, Robert John Roachford, born around 1800 or, or a little earlier. Number three, Colin Berry of Landsboro, Queensland, Australia. Welcome as a member, Richard James Berry. That's who they're looking for. Richard James Berry, born in County Cork uh, in 1840, died in 1884. Uh, Toowoomba, old Queensland, Australia. Married Mary Alice Murphy, born uh, in 1842 in Belfast. And uh, I've got that bigger story on these searches on the blog. You might want to check our blog out at irishroots.com to see the details. Number four, welcome gold member Eleanor Kendall of New Westminster in Canada. Your free passenger list book has shipped. You get your choice of a, f a free book when you join up right at that moment. And uh, that's what she picked. And she's looking for Connery, Connery, Conroy. And she says, my grandmother was born in the city of Kilkenny. Her father, Lawrence Connery, came from... Muckley and her mother uh, uh, also came from uh, maybe that was from Ruth's town. You have to look at the blog in five. Welcome, renewing member Martin Murray of Falkirk in the UK, searching for Duke, King, Jordan, and Murray. And we've even got number six. Welcome, Patricia M. Stack of New York, new member, and Suzanne Harvin of Kennesaw, Georgia. And that last entry, Suzanne Harvin of Kennesaw, Georgia, she was looking for some canties in County Cork. And on one of my first trips to Ireland, uh, I seem to remember that somebody was looking for canties there. And we even found a, some, some uh, gravestones on that. But now we're talking about the Irish family name of the day. And that's uh, going to be Barry of County Cork. But I got to say, thanks to everybody who's joined up the last couple of weeks. It, it really helps. And uh, without you, there's no podcast. There's no books. Uh, none at all. You're the only support I've got. So I support you uh, when, when you send me your memberships and uh, and the books. It sure makes a difference. But now we're looking for Barry of County Cork, at Cork and that's for, for Colin Barry of Queensland, Australia. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of related spellings of the name. Barry can be B-A-R-R-Y, B-A-R-R-I-E. And it can also have several origins. Uh, you can also take a look in the variant spelling groups in the guide to the spellings of Irish family names, and that's on the blog, too, a link to that. Now, if we take a quick look at some 12th century Barry invasions, and those are really well known, if you go back to the 12th century, you're going to find Philip de Barry got lands from his uncle Robert Fitzstephen, including Barrymore and O'Reary and Kilmore, and there's many more branches of the, that name in Cork that descend from uh, those berries of Barrymore. And you're also going to see a Barry Og family, which is uh, one Barry family of Cork tied to the Barry, uh, Barony of Killalee. And you can do a lot of hunting on that. Now, if you look at uh, Barry of Carberry, you're going to see uh, the I Book of Irish Family lists them. And uh, here's part of that entry. It says, uh, O'Berry is given by O'Heron as a chief of Montier Barry and by O'Halloran as a ch chief of Aaron. And O'Brien's Dictionary gives Montier Berry as part of the uh, ancient Carberry lands in County Cork. And they're often confused with the Norman Berry family. And the name is now spelled the very same way. So there's a clue. There's, there's an Irish Berry family and a Norman Berry family. Uh, so they're saying. And uh, O'Heron talks about them. I've got a quote in the book. And it says they're of the race of of a particular uh, clan and they rule over the land of waves which is not surpassed by the smooth plains of mans uh now when it's of uh, when the name is of norman origins the berry or d berry family has been found in cork for many many centuries and uh, when kinsale came under norman rule in 1179 the abandoned river formed a natural path of division the berries held the lands on the north of the abandoned river and uh also on some of the lands to the south. So gosh, that takes it about all up, doesn't it? Uh, but I thought you might be interested in that. And there's also uh, the Irish Book of Arms. And of course, there's a remarkable number of berries there. And there's 12 in all, and no fewer than 10 have illustrations in them. And that includes uh, Richard Berry of Barrymore, Smith Berry, Berry of Furville, Ballyvonair, Ballyvonair uh, Ballyclaw, and uh, that's in County Cork. 
And there's more than one uh, coat of arms designed for that uh, family name. Now, if we take a quick look, you can take a quick look and see uh, that there's 177 listings for the name on our free master online index, the place where you can go and search your name too. And that tells you there's a whole lot of that name in Ireland as well as in our county books. Uh, but there's multiple listings, listings in our books on Cork and County Clare. And uh, Barry Oag is a branch in the Annals of Ireland by the four masters it's covered. And the D. Berries are also covered in the Annals. And so is uh, Barry of Santry uh, by the, in, in the Annals of Ireland by the four masters. And D. Berry is also given as a name of Huguenot or origin by O'Hart. And lastly, you can also see that Barry's castle is found in the tribes and customs of the High Fiacra. And of course, you spell High Fiacra, F-I-A-C-H-R-A-C-H, and that high is H-Y. But you can also find H-Y changed to U-I, and uh, that just depends on what period of time you're looking at and who's doing the translation of the, uh, of the work uh, into, into uh, English. Uh, that's just one more tip. To, uh, remember that names can be changed uh, uh, not only in the English language, but way back in the Irish language. And that's just one on the High Fiacra. We also publish a book on the High Mini. Same, same questionnaire. It can be spelled several different ways. Well, now it's Around the World in Irish Ways, the web page and the videos of the month. Number one, we've got a Cork Rodeo video, Mickey Berry heading upstream. I don't know, it's, it might be a losing battle. I saw him get dunked a couple of times, but that's on YouTube just for fun. Number two, uh, photos of worn Ogham stones or Oham stones in Ireland. That's a video, and that's, of course, about the Celtic alphabet known as Oham, and they have those uh, lines carved on them, so... You might enjoy seeing just what that is. And number three, Blarney Castle County Cork set to fiddle music in a little video. That might be good. That's just for fun, too, but it's some good fiddling, and you get to see uh, the good old Blarney Castle. And if you're from Cork, uh, you got to know where you got your Blarney from. Number four, uh, the Berry Family Genealogy webpage. That site says it traces the genealogy of uh, their paternal grandparents, Walter Joseph Berry and Myrtle C. Duncan, from Oliver Springs, Tennessee, back to Ireland and Scotland. So what do you know? A union between Ireland and Scotland. That's good to hear. Number five, Mallow County Cork Heritage Center. We just picked that out at random. County Cork has several heritage centers. Uh, Mallow is one of them, and of course they're on the web. I have the link to uh, all five of these web pages and or videos on the blog. So you just go there, you click them, and you're in, and... Uh, once you get there, usually they take you to uh, YouTube it's a, if it's a video, but not all the time. But once you get there, you can poke around and see if there's any other videos uh, that you might even like more. I know that's hard to imagine, but you might see something right up your alley. Uh, that does it for the web pages and videos of the month. Now it's curious news and notes from Ireland Today, everybody's favorite. <laughs> We've just set a bald-headed record, folks. No, it's not Eagles, but it's 317 people who shaved themselves bald in one hour in Dublin. And I guess they did it at all at the same time. I don't know how they cleaned up the mess afterwards. Uh, but a link on the blog. Number two, the Irish language requirements are being debated for the leaving certificates in Ireland. Uh, they want maybe I guess that means that uh, you wouldn't have to take Irish to graduate, which would be a blow to uh, Irish Gaelic language studies, but... On the other hand, some store, some uh, uh, exclusively Irish language schools have sprung up over there, and they're doing real good, so it's hard telling. Number three, uh, the Medjugorje visionary, uh, Vika Ivanakovic uh, Medjaktovic, is touring Ireland, or has just toured Ireland, and several thousand folks, they say they're, they're older in age that, that went there to see her, but uh, went there to see her, her, her reaction to her visions or the apparition, so... I thought that was an interesting story. I don't know how much faith I put into something that draws that big a crowd, but uh, I guess since I didn't see it on television, it might be okay. 
Uh, number four, the Aurora Borealis has been quite a display in the north, northern sky in Ireland. Those are the northern lights referred to when you studied it in school. And, you know, they say it in County Antrim and County Londonderry, it's the very best. Number five, Google buys Dublin's tallest building. That's one giant buying another. I don't know how much longer that can go on. We're getting awful big there, aren't we? Uh, link to all these stories on the blog. Number six, 1,000 dolphins gather around the Kinsale gas feed, a uh, gas field, and they're feeding. And it's just fins and tails splashing everywhere you looked. And uh, they're, they're hoping it kept up and it would keep on for another couple of days. I don't know if it do did or not. Number seven, you know, we genealogists all jump on the census of Ireland looking for our ancestors and we're really upset when we can't find them or we found out that census has been burnt in a fire or uh, or burnt in warfare, who knows what. But they do it every five years, uh, take the census that it is, and it begins this year on March 11th. Uh, so we want to remind all you folks in Ireland to fill out those forms really carefully and correctly for family researchers uh, several generations from now who might appreciate some good information if they're tracing their family history. Uh, and they got a link to that on the blog. So that about wraps it up today. Just want to remind you that uh, uh, on the Hello Fauna podcast, that's part of the head school. We've got six fields of study that I'm putting together here, and that's our Irish language field of study. And uh, today it's the uh, uh, Oum stones or the Oum alphabet that we're talking about we've got a oh a 20 25 minute interview uh with chris that i talked gave a little excerpt uh, for a little earlier in this broadcast and it's a good one if you want to learn about something new and who doesn't want to do that but uh, we're also going to get that second season a full second season of hello fada in uh, i just got to finish the projects i'm doing so uh i hope to see you there and be sure to check that out today that's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America, and on 2,000 years of Irish history, as well as on the counties, and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important. And write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. <laughs>